All right. So before François gets uh, gets into the, mm. so let me just bring in the title slide. So I have it in the video. Um, so as I said, this is François Donzé on Redfish programming with Ansible and HP One View. Um, before we get started with that Dev Talk, I uh, just want to remind you that all these Dev Talks have a, have a page on our website, which you should you should bookmark. Um, and these dev talks are uh, every two weeks. So uh, you can find the calendar there. You can find the registration links once I open the registration. And you can find the replay link if you miss uh, the session and you really want to do it. In many cases, when we do hands on lab, this uh, session end up becoming a, a workshop on demand. So uh, guess what? The one Francois will be doing is a workshop on demand as well. Uh, and uh, so it means that not only you can watch the replay, but you can also get yourself a platform provided by the workshops on demand uh, infrastructure in the hack shack of HP Dev and do the hands-on lab yourself. The next topic that we'll be covering in uh, the Dev Talks will be on May 26. And this is also interesting because we are inviting a partner from Run AI, and he will be talking, Guy will be talking about. Uh, uh, GPU sharing um, with uh, Run AI, and Run AI, if you don't know, is a, is a partner that has a that is part of the marketplace for HP Esmeral. In on June 9, we have uh, our team member Denis coming back to present on deploying end-to-end -end machine learning workflow with uh, Esmeral MLOps. So this is June 9th, and after that, we'll do a quick break for Discover and we'll resume with some more content in, uh, in July. We also need you to grow that community. I know I'm telling you this every two weeks, but uh, we have a number of things that you can benefit from it. Uh, first of all, I would say the workshops on demand. Uh, take a look. We, have, we are growing this, uh, the numbers of workshops uh, almost, well, on a monthly basis. Um, we've just added, for example, a new workshop during KubeCon last week uh, for Kubernetes 101. Um, and uh, it's, it's already very successful because it's almost number one after only one week. So uh, you can take a look at that. If you do uh, take the workshop, first of all, it's open to everyone. So HP folks are, of course, welcome to, to do that. Uh, you can also invite customers that you think or partners that you think might be interested by the subject. And if you uh, do the workshop yourself, please uh, do us a favor and, and fill up the survey because we need feedback on this functionality so we can make uh, it better or we can add more topics and, and so on. You can have other ways to contribute. Uh, if you'd like to contribute, we, we are accepting blogs contribution, Dev talk contribution. So if you feel like a subject you, you master, you'd like to share with us and the rest of the community, please speak up and we'll find a, a slot for you. We also would like you to uh, try to invite some customer to another kind of topics that we do called the Munch and Learns. These are monthly talks that we do toward the end of the month. And the next one we have, uh, we started this uh, series in, in January 21. And the next one we have is uh, the part two of uh, non-plug on data science that uh, Doug Hackett is doing. It's really interesting because it's, it's not using any slides. It's only on a, on a tablet, a whiteboard, if you want. And uh, the part one is available as a replay. And feel free, you can, you can join us, of course, but you can also invite customers that have interest in, in understanding better what, is, uh, what, what data science is. And finally, we created a slide uh, which you can use. This is the slide uh, in your presentation when you talk to customers so they understand better that we have a dev community, we are doing software, and we, have, we are also contributors to open source projects. It's important people understand that we are, uh, we are there as well. So you can find all those links here on that slide. And the QR code here will uh, guide you through a web page with all those links. So you don't have to type anything or remember anything. All right. So please do uh, use that slide. Even if you don't talk about it, leave it in the backup slides when you visit customers. That would be maybe uh, useful for another team or uh, developer within that customer. All right. With this, I, I would like to turn it over to uh, Francois for, for the real content of the session. Thank you very much. 
Uh, yes, thank you very much. And actually, Fred, do you want to explain to people uh, that they can register right now so they can follow me live? Yes, I will do so. So I will very, very quickly uh, share my screen and uh, probably, so if I can find it. Uh, okay, here we go. So share screen. Okay, share this one, share. And so here you are. Okay, so this is a URL that I already pasted in the chat. So would you please, uh, could you copy paste it, uh, DJ or uh, Francois yes. in the chat so that people can actually uh, uh, reach out to this uh, workshop on demand uh, environment. And from there on, obviously, you'll be looking at uh, the, the workshop that you are willing to do today, which is obviously, and I don't remember it, it's Ansible. So uh, you can be... do a control F with Redfish. Yeah, but this is the and one then, that, no, that I'm no, looking I just, for. I just want to make some publicity. Okay. That there are several Redfish workshops on demand. <laughs> Indeed. The one we are looking for is using the ILO Redfish API with Ansible and HP One View. So all you have to do is just click on the register button, okay? And you will see a pop-up coming up here and you have to just enter your name, uh, e company email and full name, then company name, then accept for the uh, terms and condition that will leave you with a four hour window and just click on register for the workshop. Once you click on the work on the button here, on the register button, uh, the automation will take place in the background and within a few minutes, I would say less than three probably, you'll receive a work, firstly a welcome email followed by a credential email providing you with all the necessary credentials to actually connect to the environment. So as you can see, the workshop is already live on our platform. So if you don't feel like doing them today, you can come back later on uh, this week, whenever. It's available 24 by seven, it's free. And it's always there as much as we can do to make it happen, I would say. So. As I said, select the, the right workshop using the Ilo Redfish API with Ansible and HP One View. Click on register, enter your name, click on the button, and there you go. That should be it. Hopefully, I should be seeing people already exactly connecting. So that means that everything is ongoing. So I leave it to you now, Francois, and you can share your screen and start the workshop. Have a good workshop, everybody. Thank you very much. So while you guys are connecting to infrastructure, my name is Francois Donzé. Um, I'm French. I am a technical consultant in the in the compute business unit. And um, today I have a pleasure to present this uh, Ansible Redfish One View um, um, workshop on demand. So once you get your credentials, once you, uh, you have entered your credential in the Jupyter infrastructure, you, you may have to start your server, sometimes it's started or not, press the start button and you will end up into this kind of environment. Big window, on the left hand side, there is a file explorer with a directory, workshop Redfish Ansible, double click on it, and you will see several folders and several file, files. The files are ending with IP, Y, and B. We call them Jupyter Notebooks. And um, well, the thing is to double click on the readme first here. When you double click on, the, on, the, on this first Jupyter Notebook, you have a new tab on the main pane of the window. You can, uh, to clean up the, the tabs here, kill the launcher, we, we don't need it anymore, and start reading the, the, this readme file. The first paragraph in, the, in this readme file is the handout. If you forget something, if you would like to keep something from this workshop, you have the environment, or uh, if you register another day to it, you will be able to go double click on the output directory and you will find the result, the output of all the exercises we're going to do today. And uh, number one, three, four, and so on, as well as the conclusion. 
as well as the YAML files, the Ansible playbooks we're going to use. So right click on a file and you can download it here. Very easy and you will be able to have a trace of what you are doing. Let me come back to the upper um, directory here. So the goal of this workshop is to learn and to have an overview on how you can manage ILO-based servers using Redfish and actually how you can manage synergy, um, I would say, one view managed servers. The problem in a one view environment, or actually we don't have any problem with one view. And however, uh, one view is able to perform a lot of things against all the synergy compute nodes in, in its um, uh, frames and closures. But sometimes, like putting or setting on or off the indicator led, the UID uh, of a server is not, as of today, possible with one view. So you need to go straight to the ILO, connect, provide some credentials, and perform your, your task. If you have 100 or 200 or more servers, you would like to do that with an Ansible playbook, for example, to, to uh, um, save, save time. And however, for a human being to access an ILO, you need to provide a username and a password, which is not very efficient in terms of security. So what we could do is leverage the one view single sign-on feature. And so you can get a session token using the one view API against, against um, the one view appliance, and then reuse that session token against the ILOs and perform your get and set uh, properties. So this is the, the main goal of this uh, workshop. In lab number one here, and uh, I will retrieve a token from a, a single sign-on token from uh, an appliance, a one-view appliance. Actually, not really a one-view appliance, but a, a one-view simulator. Okay. And, and in lab two, three, four, and five, I, I will reuse that token well, fake token against uh, an, an ILO, a synergy ILO, to get and set some properties, always the same property, using Ansible scripts. The in lab number two, so the first Ansible uh, playbook using this SSO token, um, will be using the, the Ansible URI built-in module. In lab number three, we will use a derived uh, playbook, HP playbook example, Ansible or well, Python transform into, into an Ansible uh, module to perform the same, the same thing. And lab number four, we will use some Ansible Galaxy collection um, uh, modules to perform always the same tasks. And in uh, lab number five, we will use the shell Ansible module to call the ILO REST tool, CLI, uh, to perform always the same. So let me click here on lab number one. I have a new tab here. I can kill tab number zero. And um, in this new playbook, in this new notebook, sorry, I have two kinds of what we call cell. This cell introduction with some text is, is, is called a markdown, is um, a markdown cell. Actually, if I, if I double click in it, I can see the source of the text. I can see the type of a cell at the top of the pane here, which is markdown. And if I hit the play button, I will render this markdown text here. Below, below the environment preparation, here, here I have a, a different kind of cell, which is a bash shell. If you take a look at the upper right corner of the pane, here I have bash. So uh, the text here is some um, bash code. What do I do? Well, I ju I'm just 
you know, setting up some some variables. Typically, the um, um, student ID number, and um, I am setting up the IP address of the simulator, the one view simulator, and I am building a configuration file on the fly containing the IP address of a simulator, username and password of the OneView, not of ILO, but on, of, of the OneView simulator, uh, password, and an API version. So this will go into a config file, um, and, and then it just print out, you are ready to continue if everything is okay. So let me press on the play button. I have an echo, which is you are ready to continue. Very good for me. So the config file has been generated um, as well. We will go, well, I can, I can go in folder number one, double click on folder number one, and here is my config file um, to be able to use the, uh, the OneView API here. Nothing fancy, this is just uh, JSON here. Um, I have another file in that directory, which is which is the YAML playbook for for Ansible, and we will we, we will um, take a look at it just after um, a, a couple of tasks we have to do. <clears throat> so before executing this Ansible playbook, we need to load the Galaxy collection for OneView uh, using this Ansible Galaxy collection install HP OneView. Go for it. So I'm just playing, playing it. We will see that actually I did a rehearsal just before this session. So uh, uh, HP OneView is already installed here. We need to perform another task before going further and, and, and perform our um, Ansible playbook. Uh, we need to take a look at the requirements uh, and, 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 and verify we, we, we have all of them here. Actually, this file requirements.txt has two lines and it requires a module called HP ICSP. It requires it, but actually we, we are not using it, so, so we don't need it anyway. And HP OneView here is the collection we just installed. So we are, we are fine for um, going further. The next step and the next uh, text we have here is the explanation of how we're going to extract and, and retrieve the token. So let's move to the um, playbook, the Ansible playbook here, where we have the list of the host file we want to target. Actually, we don't want to do a, an SSH just like Ansible performs uh, naturally. We don't want to perform an SSH to the OneView appliance. We want to use an HTTP REST API. So we will stay on localhost. We won't gather any facts concerning my local host because I know it and I don't care about its properties. And we are using, we want to load uh, uh, and use uh, the hp.oneview uh, galaxy, galaxy collection. Once this is done, and we will perform three tasks. Get server properties, um, save the properties somewhere and then print the result. How do we get the server properties? First, we need to um, give a pointer to the JSON config file we created on the fly previously. And we, we, we tell as well the HP OneView collection that we want a token for, we want something for a, the computer in base seven. And we want actually to retrieve all the properties contained in the remote console URL endpoint. So executing these tasks mean performing a get on the remote console URL 
And, and automatically, so if you go and read the documentation of the OneView uh, API uh, and collection here, it will save the results in this variable. And for us, we want to extract the properties from uh, the remote console URL, perform some uh, regular expre expression search, and put it, um, put it somewhere and then print the result. So as you can see, very easy to retrieve a single sign-on token from an HP appliance. I go down here, and this is the, um, the, the call of Ansible with this playbook, um, the, the playbook in, in its uh, YAML, YAML file here. Play this cell. And I get the results on the screen. So, you know, Jupiter is very, very interesting. And my result is here. I have a token that I can use to access to access base seven in this in this uh, synergy frame. Again, we did that again uh, against um, a one view appliance. So this is fake. Everything is fake in this workshop, but actually pretty close and exactly really close to, to uh, the real reality. So I have my token. What I can do is go to the next exercise and use that token to get to set to get and set um, a UID the um, the the light on on the chassis of the Synergy um, box. And uh, we want to do that using the Redfish API. So what we, we will have to do is authenticate and then uh, set, get and set the properties um, the good way. And I will explain what is the good way later on. The first bash cell is as well um, an environment preparation where again, I do um, put, create a variable with my student ID number. And um, <clears throat> each of you, each of the people connected will have a specific port, not to access a real ILO here, but an ILO simulator. Everything is simulated here, everything is fake. So each of you, you have um, a simulator that you can access using a simulator base port plus your ID number here. This is how, how we work here. And we will have to supply as well a OneView SSO token. You can see that the real token is fake. It's a string, but it's completely fake because we are we are using simula ILO simulators and we obtain a token from, from a OneView simulator. Some other um, things here, if you have problems with your simulators, you will be able to reset them. There is a specific cell for that. And uh, uh, the, next, the, the, the next block here is to verify that if simulators, the ILO simulators are working fine. And the very last um, block here is to create an inventory file for Ansible containing only one entry, which is your simulator IP plus your dedicated uh, port, TCP, TCP, uh, TCP port. There are some one, um, Ansible variables, a block of Ansible variables. The only interesting one for you is the token, the fake token. OK, but we need it anyway because we want to pass it to, uh, uh, to Ansible at some point. So let's execute. That cell, good news, my ILO simulator is reachable, so I will be able to progress here. Um, the next cell shows how to, um, to load everything which is needed um, to use the URI Ansible module and retrieve the, um, and, and do a, perform some get and set during the URI Ansible module. I'm just playing it here because it takes two minutes. Uh, so I'm creating a virtual environment. So you guys don't mess up with your Python environment. You have a dedicated environment here. 
I modify the prompt because otherwise it's too long and the output is not very, very interesting. To make everything smooth, you need to install a wheel. And, uh, and these two are the modules of, uh, well, it's a JSON um, module path to, to, to be able to, to work on JSON strings and, and Ansible, you need Ansible, of course, to be able to uh, perform your uh, playbooks. My environment is created. Um, here, I could restart my simulator, but I don't want just to go faster we may be not um, able to go to through all the modules and here and let me clean up a little bit and make some um, room here i will click Papa? yes while you're doing this uh, there was a question in the chat and people are asking whether where can where can they get the uh, ilo simulator and how to use it. In oh, um, um, is it written in the README? Control F. Actually, this is from DMTF. Uh, if you Google, if you if you Google uh, DMTF simulator and DMTF Redfish server. You will get first a, um, um, a creator that, and from there, you will be able to suck up the entire Redfish tree, Redfish tree of your ILO or, or, or of a Open BMC or whatever, and then you can serve it. Uh, so, if the question is uh, is in is in the chat, I will be able to yeah mockup creator here. So going with so first you use this mockup creator and then and then you use uh, the Redfish server. Uh, this is open uh, open source from um, on GitHub from from the DMTF. So uh, thank you, Mr. Bruno, for uh, for that. So uh, yes, I was doing uh, I was doing some uh, makeup on on my screen here. If I double if I right click on the on the tab of my notebook here, I can see new view for notebook. This will duplicate uh, the view of the same notebook. And now what I will do, I would like to, um, uh, to go into the second folder here and double click on my um, YAML file. So on the right hand side, I have uh, um, the notebook and on the Oh, sorry, on the left hand side, I have uh, the notebook and on, on the right hand side, I do have a YAML Ansible file, so I, I, can, I can explain everything here. Control B will, um, will um, hide the, the explorer, the file explorer here. So, <clears throat> the thing that you have to understand in Redfish is that each and every property in a Redfish tree, in a server, in an ILO 5 or even 4, each property is, is, uh, is belonging to what we call a data type. By going into the HP Redfish API reference document, and if you search for indicator led in that document, you will learn you will get the, the data type of this standard redfish resource okay so um, this is a, a screenshot here of, of the, the documentation so indicator led is part is a member of a chassis uh, data type and i can see that it's writable uh, good for me because actually I would like to modify the status of the um, of the lead of a chassis, and we learn as well. But actually, we don't really know that the chassis data type is located underneath Redfish V1 chassis in my in my ILO. Okay, good. 
So if I do a get of Redfish V1 chassis, I will get actually the collection of all the chassis visible from that ILO. If I am in a synergy, if I am ILO, if I log into a synergy ILO, actually I can see two chassis. One chassis of the compute node of the blade and the enclosure chassis. Yeah. So if I just perform a get on that collection, I will get two items, Redfish V1 chassis, an item pointing to the chassis of a blade and an item pointing to the chassis of the enclosure. And you know what? From one server to another or from one vendor to another, um, the, the item is not the same. So if you want a program, if you want an Ansible script that works for all your ILOs, because in, on, a, on a ProLiant, you will not get several chassis. However, on a Superdome, on a Moonshot, you will get several of them, but you don't know how they, they are called. So, so uh, the rule when you want to get and set resources in a, in a redfish tree is to discover those items and then you perform your operation um, um, uh, on that. So the, the Ansible playbook on the right hand side uh, mimics this crawling, what you have to do. So this works on, 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 a, on a synergy on um, um, a blade, on synergy computer node, on, on a, a DL, uh, on a superdome, uh, even on an amplifier pack, because the amplifier pack is using Redfish as well. So let's go and take a, a brief look at the um, at the source of the Ansible YAML file. So uh, I want to target all my OneView managed BMCs which actually there is only one, which is your uh, ILO simulator. I don't want to gather uh, things here, some variables and the entry point of the data type. The documentation told me, and this is standard for everybody, every um, uh, vendor in the world uh, implementing Redfish. So the indicator led is at, and, uh, somewhere under that location. So this is my, my uh, search um, um, starting point. The first task is to discover the chassis collection. Good. So, and I am using, as I said, the URI standard Redfish module. So I provide the URI of, of my um, um, ILO method get headers and you can see that in my header i send the token fake token okay we understand everything is fake in this workshop but i can i, I will be able to to uh, authenticate using that token instead of a username password with uh, uh, in clear text in in that file in that ascii file so so the token uh, has um, uh, is kind of cryptid here and I store um, the, the result of a get in, in a variable. Uh, I save the location and I um, just extract the ID, uh, well, some, well, all the members and the ID, their names of this collection. Maybe there is no, only one, maybe there are several. Anyway, I want to get the, the uh, uh, every, everything from the starting point. Then um, I want to print what, what uh, I did get. So I have to authenticate again. And I want to loop with all the items in the collection I retrieved in the first task. I want to, to, to uh, print uh, the ID, the chassis type, uh, the indicator led status as well. So this is the end of my get of all the chassis visible from, from this uh, point here. 
The second uh, thing to do is to patch the, the value of, of, um, of the light. I need to, uh, again, authenticate. And uh, if the light is lit, I want to put it off. If the light is off, I want to put it lit. Good. And the last task is to get and, and, and verify we have our um, a good, good, good result here and, and print the result. So what you have to understand here is the authentication method as well as how we crawl the redfish tree to get our uh, result. I'm going on, on, the, on the playbook here and I launch the Ansible playbook using the run button. And we take a look at the, out, at the output here. So uh, discover chassis. Let's go. Um, I, could, I can see that I have one blade chassis with ID. So the item I talked about is called one. And the chassis light is off. And I have another chassis, which is the enclosure. It's an enclosure chassis, and it's called enclosure. I cannot, um, you know, uh, I cannot guess the name of this uh, of this chassis. And then we do the patch, and then we go for the result. Now the blade chassis is lit, and the uh, uh, enclosure chassis is lit as well. So you can go ask a technician to go in the data center and look for a frame uh, uh, with with the light on uh, as well with um, with the, um, the blade here and, and perform some maintenance task, task. The last cell of this, um, of this notebook is here we are switching to um, a proliant here and we perform the exact same Ansible YAML file here and run it. I did not change everything and I didn't change nothing on, on the right hand side here and I get the result. So my chassis is a Rakmund. It's not a blade anymore. And it's called one as well. OK, good. The light is off. And then we do the patch. And now uh, the, the light is, is on. So you could learn here using the, the easiest way uh, with Ansible, the URI Ansible module, how to, to get and set a property and this properly, I would say. So it works with all and um, each and every um, Redfish implementation in, in the world. Um, I click on, let me cl clean up here. I click on, on exercise number three, where we'll do exactly the same, but using using a different Ansible module. We will use, uh, um, we will use the examples that we have in the Python ILRS library. So if I click on that link here, I go to GitHub. In this um, GitHub repository, we do have some, some Python examples to retrieve using the Python IRS library. Um, so we can get and set using Python things uh, in, in, in a remote, um, in a remote ILO. Uh, so those are Python sources. We modified, I modified a little bit uh, those Python scripts to make them as um, Ansible modules. So uh, I modified actually one of them. So, so um, yes, um, so I took one of the examples, the set UID light or get UID light. I, I modified it to make it an Ansible module. And all the pointers, if you want to discover, you go to all those links uh, uh, and you, have, you, you will have all the sources of everything here. Um, let's now run the environment preparation. It's the same as the previous exercise. 
let's create as well um, a virtual environment for our, our uh, Ansible and Python environment. You will notify that I load, I am installing two more modules, Python modules, which is the Certify uh, module here and the Python ILRS library. Of course, uh, I want to use a Python module coming from an HP Python um, example. So I need to load the Python ILRS library and then uh, uh, install um, Ansible and GMS path as well. Okay. Um, I don't want to restart my simulator. And now let's take a look at the, at the, at the Ansible playbook. Control B to get um, the file browser. Going to folder number three, double click on the YAML file, moving that YAML file on my right hand side pane, cleaning up here. Oh, I went to number three, uh, sorry. I should have gone to number two. Where am I here? Uh, no, 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 that's, that's okay, that's okay. So this is exercise number three, so uh, in directory number three. So <clears throat> now in this Ansible file, what do I do? I do a get and print indica indicator led uh, values. For that, I have to call an Ansible module called get UID light. And I, I give it as credentials session token and, and the uh, Ansible port and register the uh, values here. So very, very simple, except that we need to see a little bit uh, what we do uh, and, and how is this get um, UID light uh, so sources. So let me return into folder number three. There is a library folder and I have a, a Python script. I just double click on it and you will be able to see the sources of this one. So the definition of um, the, the function is here. And okay, this is Python. And uh, you can see that we are crawling st starting at the chassis level and we are extracting and discovering all the members getting data ID is the name of the collection uh, members, and then we, we will print them here, okay? So this is the, the definition. Uh, I'm going pretty fast because we don't have a lot of time here, but you have all the sources and you can uh, learn how. And the second part of the script here is to create a, what we call a redfish object by providing the URL of, of the, um, the URL of, of the, the ILO and the session key, which is the fake token we got in exercise number one. Once we have that, we can log into the, the ILO, do whatever we want. So typically uh, retrieve the chassis uh, states, uh, light states, and when we, once this is done, we just log out, make some cleanup for um, uh, for Ansible, and we are done. Okay. So, from previous exercise, we moved the crawling of a redfish tree from the Ansible script inside a Python script but we are doing exactly the same, right? Starting at the data type, at the top level data type uh, location, which is the chassis. And then we crawl, we gather, we get, uh, we, we perform here, we, we get the chassis URI, 
and uh, from all the members, we extract all the data IDs and we, we append all of them in a list. And then we get uh, all uh, the ID of all the chassis we could, we could get from this uh, Python module, right? So the set UID is performing exactly the same, but instead, instead of doing a, um, a get, it's doing somewhere, uh, you have some um, text here to explain everything. And at some point uh, you have um, the patch somewhere, I can't remember where it is, but it's uh, okay. Here we have, we put it lead or off. And, and at some point we do a patch uh, to the location here. Okay, so here is the cell calling the Ansible playbook. Just run it. And we have a similar output than in, in um, exercise number one. Uh, I have a chassis called one and I have my enclosure chassis or both of them on the synergy are on and uh, then uh, I can I did a patch using using a Python example and the HP uh, Redfish library without changing anything to my Ansible module and my Python script I can run it against a proliant I have only one item in my collection which is, which is um, oh, I didn't print the, the type of chassis here, but it's a, it's a Rackmund chassis anyway. So in this example, we used different Ansible modules coming from, from HP IDOREST library examples. And the Ansible playbook again moved the crawling of the um, of the redfish tree from uh, from uh, uh, the playbook inside the Python things. I'm not going to go uh, through all the um, number four and number five, but basically it is the same here, the same exercise using different Ansible modules. Here we are using the community general collection. There is a pointer on it. You can go and see what we have. We have a three modules, Ansible modules, a Redfish info, a Redfish command, a Redfish config. So in this um, exercise, we do a red, we use the Redfish info with the fake SSO token to retrieve the state of the chassis chassis lights um, and uh, then we use the redfish command and Sibol module from the galaxy collections to perform what we, what we want to to do modify modify the operation here uh, and again uh, we do that against a proliant and and the synergy here um, the creation of the of the python environment is very smooth because because um, galaxy collection embeds all the required li libraries here. And the last example here is using the shell Ansible module. You know, we're using the shell Ansible module. You can call anything, uh, any command line from, from uh, a bash environment, for example. Um, I spend three or five minutes to explain um, this cache problem we have here. So idle rest is an HPE free little tool, very handy, that you can use from the command line or that you can use um, as with an interactive mode. Uh, there is a workshop on demand concerning idle rest. Uh, and uh, if you want to test it, uh, register for that workshop on demand and, and use it. And uh, using this um, little tool, you, you can get and set properties in, in a remote ILO or in a local ILO. If you are installing um, ILO REST on Windows or Linux in an operating system, sitting up on, a, on an ILO um, server, 
And the first thing that ILORES does is um, um, retrieve um, some properties from the remote ILO or the local ILO, ILO and put it in a local cache here. So because we are using a simulator, um, I, am, I, I have to, to fake this cache location. This is why I do have a paragraph explaining the cache con considerations. And I can ask ILORest to point to this uh, specific cache directory. So this is um, 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 interesting. Authentication con considerations here. Actually, um, ILORest, as of today, does not does not uh, give a possibility to authenticate use, using a fake uh, a token, an SSO token. But anyway, I wanted, uh, well, this can change in the future. And I wanted to show you how you can integrate either rest in an Ansible playbook. So again, we do have this environment preparation as previously. I don't want to restart my, my uh, oh, um, here I did set up two simulators, um, a Synergy simulator and a DL, ProLiant um, simulator. Both of them are, are um, up and running and I can, I can reach uh, them on that port and the respective cache of those simulators are in that directory. So everything is there, you can browse the cache, understand how it works. Uh, so if I remember correctly, my ILOs are off. We'll see if I can put them on here. And then, so this is exercise number five. Double click on, on, on five here. Um, the tar compressed file here are, are my cache, my fake cache directory is here and my Ansible file is here and I move it on the right hand side here so we can have a look as well as to the exercise control B to exit here and you will be able to uh, go so again as of today ILO REST does not um, give a possibility to authenticate with a session token. So I have username and password. But anyway, the interesting thing here is uh, um, to understand. Uh, so you can learn as well how to use Allorest using the shell Ansible module here. And we are doing exactly the same as previously, uh, give, uh, um, get and set. Except that we don't log in. Because if I really do a logging, a real logging, I will wipe out, wipe out the cache directory, and I don't want to do, do that in this environment. As well as the logouts, if I perform a real logout, uh, idle rest will, will um, uh, erase the cache directory. So, so I will have to go again in the environment preparation to reset everything. And then this cell, goes through the Ansible module. So yeah, so here, so we are starting with the DL here, off for the light. Uh, synergy is off and off for the blade and the enclosure. And then uh, I do lit and lit and lit for the, the, the next things here. So I went fairly quick through all those examples, just because you can, um, you can register again to this workshop and um, perform it, you will have four hours to play with that. This is a conclusion notebook, which says, please log out using the file um, menu here, log out cleanly when you are done with your um, um, workshop and go to the survey. And if I click on it, should I click on it, uh, Didier or, uh, or sure, Fred? Sure, you can. Let's try. I will also pull the oh. 
to top yeah. the poll for, for people to answer those three simple questions about the dev talk itself. So, yeah, I, so I, I, won't, I won't answer this, uh, this survey because I am the instructor <laughs> and I don't want to, to modify the real results. So I'm done and um, I can see there are, there are some questions here. The first to aspire Nilo and make a simulator of it. Okay. Yeah, oh. I think I think oh, you yes. covered that question already. Yes, yes, and, yes, yes. Uh, Bruno gave uh, the pointers, so we're good on the questions. I I um I started the poll, so please uh, give us a, a quick feedback on the level of the session and if it was good use of your time. Uh, thank you, Francois. Uh, there's a lot to cover, as you said. Uh, this is a four, uh, we can do that in, a, we provide you with a platform for four hours uh, when, uh, when you do it on, uh, on demand. So, uh, and, and for those who have a platform right now, we will not cut you off. So you can continue to do the pieces that you wanted to do or that Francois didn't have time to cover and uh, do it on your own. Um, I don't know if anybody has any other questions. Yeah, we'll be happy if you can fill up the form uh, so we get some feedback from you on if you like the experience, if you like um, the content, which content you'd like to see in the future, that kind of thing. So we can continue to make this platform evolve over time. No question for Francois Redfishman. We forgot to say, I think, but in the links at the beginning, there's a Slack workspace that we uh, we use. And uh, Francois has a section there which is dedicated to Redfish and ILO, and uh, he provides a lot of answers to uh, customers, partners, and HP folks to uh, around Redfish. So if you are not part of our Slack, join our Slack, you'll see, um, you can see Francois in action over there. That shouldn't be, uh, I'll fix that. Thank you. All right. Any questions, anyone? Or Francois, for us? I'm fine. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, Francois. And for the rest uh, of the folks, I will see you in two weeks for this uh, Run AI uh, session. And uh, as I said, feel free to... Uh, continue working on your workshop, do a file logout when you're done. We'll be grateful for that and uh, fill up the little poll that you have in front of you. I see still a lot of people that haven't voted, so let us know. And uh, with that, I would like to uh, thanks everyone for joining. <laughs>